Thank you, Mr. Chong. Please be seated. The section on the review of the RGC Phase 1 will now begin. The Secretary General of the University Grants Committee, Dr. Richard Armour, will give a presentation on the conclusions and recommendations of the Phase 1 review, as well as the action plan to follow up the recommendations. Dr. Armour, please. Thank you, uh, Sissy. Hi, uh, colleagues. Uh, nice to see uh, so many people here. Um, my job is uh, difficult. Uh, I've got two, uh, uh, two sets of PowerPoint slides, um, which I've got to get through uh, each uh, 20 minutes, um, so bear with me, um, because uh, the benefit of this uh, symposium will be in our discussion session. So I'd like to get through the, the presentation of content, as a good teacher would, as soon as possible, and then we'll get to the, um, we'll get to the discussion part. So uh, let me begin by, uh, I'll, I'll be talking about the, uh, the, the, the outcomes of the research grant, the RGC review, and then talk about the uh, UGC's action plan in response to that review. So that's my, uh, that's my agenda. So um, just bear with me while I... So uh, the, the, the review was conducted in two phases. Um, it was actually, the, the, the whole idea was started by the then new chairman, Professor uh, Benoit in 2014. Uh, RGC uh, itself decided to conduct a review um, of itself, and um, but that took some time to develop the uh, terms of reference and the like, and uh, there was quite a lot of challenges in that. Um, and uh, it was um, the, the 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 review was the, the terms of reference were expanded to cover both macro and as well as operational issues. Um, so eventually, the um, the review was uh, uh, decided to be broken into two phases. Phase one, the macro issues such as the portfolio balance, uh, the RGC funding schemes, the assessment panels, the committee structure and good practice in overseas funding uh, jurisdictions. And then phase two would cover the less macro issues such as the quality of the assessment and monitoring processes, means of communication among um, stakeholders, members of panels and the like. Um, and uh, that, that was how it, it went ahead. Um, the then RGC took a view that uh, to avoid any perceptions of conflict of interest, it would uh, not conduct the review itself, it would not oversee it, and it asked the, RG the UGC uh, to take over the, uh, the conduct of the review, and that's indeed what happened, uh, and, and certainly as far as phase one is concerned, and uh, that's what we'll talk about um, today. So um, uh, there was the the the, uh, the task force that oversaw the, um, uh, the the RGC reviewed conducted a lot of consultation and engagement with stake stakeholders. We hope you were aware of that. Participated in the questionnaire surveys, the online consultation. Uh, there was a, a, a session, uh, several sessions, uh, uh, asking uh, seeking views from the heads of universities senior management of the self-financing degree awarding institutions. Um, the consultant conducted 18 face-to-face -face, um, focus groups, uh, which were very important. Um, and then the task force submitted uh, a report to the UGC in May 2017. Um, that report was accepted. Um, later on, uh, later that year, uh, later earlier this year, I should say, the heads of universities were consulted. Um, and the, H of in, the heads of institutions consulted, as well as the RGC itself. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the comments were taken into account in the UGC's action plan, which we'll talk about later, and the full review report and action plan was released uh, to the public uh, in the public domain on 21st September 2017. The main conclusions. There were a number of conclusions, uh, which I'll, I'll, I'll go into in, in detail, but the, the overview is that the, the principal conclusion was that the current system works reasonably well when compared to some other jurisdictions. And that said, however, the task force and the uh, consultants who in, informed the task force believed that some improvements uh, could be made. A number of these uh, were in, involved with them, in communication and engagement, data collection, and discussion about the impact uh, and benefit of grant processes. But as I said, we'll go through them um, one at a time in some detail. Here are some of the major, in, uh, the major observations that you see set out there, communication and engagement, as the chairman just spoke about, 
the volume of research funding, we don't have enough money to spend. Um, we have to uh, bring ourselves uh, up to date with the uh, rest of the world who cares deeply, more, more deeply than we do, about the impact and benefit to society of research funding. We have to think about the portfolio balance. And we have to, uh, RGC has to think about future strategic consideration, the areas where um, uh, future strategic consideration should be best spent. And we have to think again about the, the coupling of research grant success to the calculation of the, the so-called R portion, which is the, the research component of the block grant. And then uh, we have to think about the quality of the assessment, its validity and reliability across different subject areas, across different panels. And um, then we had to think about uh, a phase two, which is the less macro uh, issues. So those are the, um, the summary of the recommendations. There were 11. Um, so let's go through each of those uh, one by one. The first one is, um, as you can see there, RGC should continue to provide a portfolio of funding and awards of varying amounts and duration for various career stages of faculty members, various disciplines, to ensure that both capacity building and some strategic development is, uh, is continued. So the, 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 the funding mix is, it was recognized to allow um, uh, capacity building for different, for researchers at different career stages. For example, the early career scheme. Um, and that was, uh, that was commended by a lot of researchers who were consulted and those who gave feedback to the, to the consultants. Um, researchers and focus groups commented positively uh, on both the specific schemes and the range of schemes provided by RGC, which is good. Um, researchers and institutional managers were very happy with the available mix and balance, uh, and the task force recognized uh, from the feedback that, that the RGC has developed a very high standard of academic research, uh, as indicated through international rankings and the like, and has been involved in fostering um, a convivial and excellent, productive academic research culture across the UGC uh, funded institutions and indeed the self-financing institutions more recently. Um, they recommended that RGC to continue to provide the, the, a diverse portfolio um, across disciplines, but also across different career stages um, of researchers and to make sure that that was continued. And um, it was uh, important that RGC should continue and enhance uh, its um, consideration and, and articulation of its position on a number of issues of global research relevance, strategic relevance, to guide uh, its own operation. Um, recommendation two, the RGC should review the broader societal impact of research as it's funded. Um, the task force um, the, who oversaw this felt that, uh, that a, in other jurisdictions, uh, the issues about impact, societal impact, um, had been uh, better articulated and better involved in research funding decisions than it had been in Hong Kong. Many stakeholders, indeed, also highlighted the need for, um, uh, for this to take place. Now, in a lot of our feedback, um, the consultants realized that uh, there was the, the overwhelming um, evidence of stakeholders was that the total amount of funds available for research uh, was insufficient. As the chairman just uh, alluded to, our percentage of GDP is, is comparatively small compared to other jurisdictions. But in order to win a higher proportion of uh, GDP being invested in research, and I use invested, not spent, invested in research, then we have to make a case. And if we have to make the case, the case has got to be able to articulate the idea of benefit to society and impact. And the, uh, the task force uh, uh, articulated this uh, in, in um, suggesting that in order to secure more funds, we have to make a case based on return to society um, as well as um, uh, academic benefit. The third recommendation, um, the government bodies which distribute funding should could review opportunities and incentives which would promote and increase the amount of funding and diversity of funding available for research in Hong Kong. Um, RGC isn't the only player in town. There are other um, uh, funding agencies available. Um, 
However, we found in the field work that uh, only 40% of UGC faculty members who are researchers who were uh, consulted, who, who responded, only 40% had ever obtained or secured funding from uh, a, a research funding source other than RGC. And this is unusual in, uh, usual, in global terms. So this lack of diversity of funding uh, uh, sources means that researchers are particularly focused on, re on receiving uh, uh, grants from RGC alone um, and the, what they plan to do and the focus of their research thinking is therefore uh, constrained, if you like, or it's focused only on what RGC, uh, the, the, they perceive to be fundable by RGC. And this is a, a continuing problem unless, unless we manage to diversify the sources. So in order to increase the diversity of funding, the government bodies that distribute funding could review measures um, to secure research funding from other sources, sources. The obvious ones are industry, business, and of course the, uh, the philanthropic, philanthropic dollar. Recommendation number four, RGC should consider how it might enhance its engagement activities with an eye to supporting stakeholder involvement in its strategic direction uh, and decision making. Now, uh, the focus group participants in particular, there were 18 focus groups, uh, they, um, they uh, articulated their, um, uh, they, that they valued the ability to feed into the RGC system during this um, research exercise, this review exercise, and that um, is good for us and good for us to know that we will try and the RGC will continue to uh, try and involve um, all stakeholders in, uh, in consideration of um, the, uh, the issues going forward. Um, the, the task force noted that whilst the RGC does carry out some engagement activities such as town hall meetings like this one, um, these are maybe uh, insufficient uh, and should be reviewed in order to develop new uh, avenues of, um, of communication, new avenues of engagement, and indeed potentially jointly with key other stakeholders to support wider engagement from the sector. This, as you'll hear in the action plan later, is very much high on our agenda and we've already started to, um, to try and roll out some uh, better communication uh, uh, venues and the like. Uh, one of them, of course, as uh, you see before you is, is why we're here today. Um, recommendation number five, the RGC should consider and articulate its position on a number of issues of global strategic relevance to ensure its strategic aims are met by its schemes. Now this is a shift in, this would be a shift in policy for uh, RGC um, in, as part of its uh, general framework. Um, the participants in our, in our study identified a number of areas for future strategic consideration. These included, for example, encouraging meaningful and genuine collaboration among and between disciplines, among and between institutions, and uh, uh, as well as measuring academic excellence for research, which serve different aims and value broader societal impact. So these are issues which, um, as well as the quality of research proposal, we might take into account in considering uh, applications and grants. The task force uh, intimated that uh, due to the range of schemes available, it's important for the RGC to review how the portfolio delivers the desirable balance of factors uh, as a whole, globally. We tend to, um, they, 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 they saw that we tended to look at individual research grants as in their own right, self-standing and the like, and didn't insufficiently took a look, took a look at the global uh, spread of the research um, uh, projects being undertaken and whether these were actually meeting the needs of uh, RGC's own aims and uh, society's needs. So um, we had to consider responsive versus strategic mode funding, funding to incentivize collaboration and academic, excel academic excellence alongside capacity building. These are all important issues but their, their, their value and relativity should be better taken into account. Related to this, the RGC and Hong Kong funders um, could work more closely together to ensure alignment of funding schemes and clarity on the roles of relative individual funders in relation to their overall aims and funding. There are several um, other uh, research bodies and we should uh, certainly communicate better uh, in order to collaborate and to make sure that the, the funding landscape is uh, fit for purpose um, uh, across all the um, uh, 
at the different venues. Recommendation six, um, RGC and UGC uh, should consider whether in the light of stakeholders' feedback, the 2015 review of the aims, objectives and consequences of the coupling of the value of the R portion to higher education institutions and the success in RGC grants should be revisited so that the both the sh long and short term consequences continue to fit within the strategic aims of the funding. Now this sounds very, very technical, but um, we found when talk talking to the respondents um, that this is a crucial issue that affects, that affects researchers at different stages of their career and, um, and has a washback effect on the uh, policies and uh, practices of the institutions. Um, for those of you who perhaps don't understand this, um, the, 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 the block grant from UGC to universities is divided into a teaching portion or an education portion and a research portion. Of the research portion, uh, we take into account two engines as drivers. One is the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, success in the research assessment exercises which are taken, uh, taken into account. The other uh, is on the RGC success rate, RGC grants, earmarked grants success rate um, on an annual basis. Um, a lot of uh, colleagues uh, who responded to the, um, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the field work felt that this, was, this had un unfortunate consequences in institutional practices, particularly around um, personnel decisions such as um, substantiation and promotion. Um, and the task force recommended that the UGC should uh, and the RGC should take another look um, at whether they had that they had that right. And indeed, as the chairman uh, mentioned, uh, that's uh, underway with several other um, uh, task forces. I, uh, recommendation number seven: the RGC should consider whether the criteria and thresholds in which quality of applications are assessed by different panels are appropriate to ensure that they're in line with their strategic aims. There's, an, there's a question raised by colleagues that um, across the different RGC disciplines, across the different panels, uh, are how do we make sure that the, uh, the decisions are, um, uh, are taken on the same basis, the criteria are the same, that they are uh, consistent, uh, and the, the RGC was invited to um, take, a, take another look at that. Certainly among colleagues who responded, there was a, a clear lack of consensus on whether all research across disciplines or types of scheme and institution uh, was or should be assessed on the same quality threshold. Uh, there wasn't a consensus on that, but it's something uh, which RGC, uh, as you'll hear later, is going to take a look at. Um, again, uh, the criteria and thresholds of the UGC funded and self-financing sectors should be clarified in line with the, uh, the strategic aims of the RGC in supporting both sectors. Um, the question is, how have we got that right? We should certainly take a look at the, at the balance uh, and, um, and think about how it might be improved. Recommendation eight, the RGC should review and enhance its communication activities with an eye to improving the understanding of RGC processes by all stakeholders. Um, clearly, uh, from the researchers who responded, it's, uh, there's, there's an insufficient understanding of the way that RGC works. Um, and uh, certainly, um, there, uh, it was uh, pointed out uh, by the task force that the RGC itself had to ensure that it improved its communication activities um, uh, uh, with, with an eye to improving uh, the understanding by all stakeholders. Um, and that, that is, is in hand, and we're, uh, we'll talk about it in the action plan. But um, going on to recommendation nine, it's clearly not simply an RGC issue. Although RGC, of course, must enhance its own communications, uh, the task force felt that the, the universities and the self-financing institutions had to review its own internal processes um, so that uh, to, to ensure that information from RGC flows down and reaches all staff. Um, this was felt to be a weakness, um, that faculty members felt they were uninformed, that they didn't uh, get sufficient help uh, either from the RGC or from their own institutions to understand exactly um, how RGC and research funding worked. Um, this was a clear conclusion of the focus groups uh, uh, across different, different universities, and uh, they highlighted a varying degree of understanding, and in some cases a significant lack of understanding or misunderstanding of RGC schemes and processes. Um, so uh, we look forward to the universities and the, the, uh, the self-financing institutions working uh, closely with RGC to review 
the joint communication processes to try and uh, better and uh, improve um, that, uh, that that's the understanding of RGC and how it works. But as I said, it's a two-way process. Um, the task force highlighted as well that it's important for researchers themselves to work to build up an accurate awareness of RGC processes, spread this knowledge among colleagues, uh, consider it as part of a professional um, uh, activity, if you like, to share with them, um, sometimes less experienced colleagues, how the uh, processes work, and to make sure that uh, those instances of misinformation are reduced and perhaps eliminated. So there is a responsibility on uh, faculty members and researchers themselves uh, to better understand um, how RGC works and the like. So RGC should review its processes and streamline them to maintain fairness and efficiency. There were a number of problems identified by the, uh, by this, by the respondents. Um, these included the number of application cycles per year, the length of time taken to review or to receive a decision on the application, uh, the declaration associated disciplinary processes and the online portal for submission. There are a number of operational issues uh, which we need to look at and we've, uh, we've agreed that, of course, we will. Um, and that we will review these and other uh, similar issues in phase two to ensure that they're streamlined and as effective uh, as possible. So those were the 11 uh, recommendations. Um, so uh, as, as we said at the beginning, um, uh, phase one will lead to a phase two review. Um, these will con consider the, the so-called less macro issues. They're not minor issues, but they're less macro issues, uh, including the quality of assessment and the monitoring processes, the means of communication, the timeline of funding schemes, the arrangement of guarding against conflict of interest and the like. Uh, this, um, unlike phase one, which, is un which was overseen by um, UGC, phase two will be overseen by uh, RGC itself. Um, and uh, this uh, will, uh, will begin in the very near future. Um, as uh, the chairman also indicated, a new task force has been established under the, the guidance of Professor Choi Lap Chi, which is looking at the planning and funding of research in general, and this will, um, this will have an impact on uh, RGC phase two, which we will have to discuss how they work together uh, in the very near future. So let me just check my timing. I'm late already, I apologize, folks. Um, I'll move on uh, to, the, uh, to the review of the Research Grants Council Phase 1, the action plan, which is the, uh, the UGC agreed, uh, the UGC agreed um, uh, plan to uh, respond to the, um, to the Phase 1 uh, review. I'll try and get through this in uh, 10 minutes uh, so that we can uh, get back on schedule. So a number of actions taken. Uh, there they are set, in, uh, set out there. Um, you can read the bullet points yourself. HOUs and HOIs have been invited to, uh, to enhance the dissemination of information. Uh, we have agreed and began already in June to disseminate the deliberations of the RGC Council meetings. We post them on the website. That will continue so that um, the decisions taken will be available uh, in the public domain, not just through um, universities uh, and senior management. Actions in the coming month, the um, chairman of RGC has agreed that he will meet the Vice President's research um, after every uh, RGC meeting uh, in order to develop, um, in order to disseminate the, the decisions. And the UGC, in partnership with RGC, will develop a communication and engagement policy with a view to improving transparency by early 2018. Um, it will be multilateral. Uh, we'll hope to engage new uh, means of communication in order to... Um, uh, to, to better engage uh, faculty and, and the like. Um, so uh, we'll also uh, think about um, social media platforms and how we can uh, use that, use those uh, to better um, inform uh, the, the community about what the, um, the RGC and the UGC indeed is doing. The volume of research funding, the dollar value. Um, this is, of, of course, of crucial interest to everybody. Um, and as you see there, UGC has explored the possibility of uh, injecting further resources into the Research Endowment Fund and will continue uh, ceaselessly uh, to seek additional financial support. Uh, as you know, or you probably uh, read in the press, if not um, directly in the policy address, uh, there's a proposed additional funding of $10 uh, billion uh, for the university research, as well as a, a separate $3 billion injection for research postgraduate um, studentships. Um, the $10 billion uh, is, uh, will be available following the report 
um, of the new task force on, uh, on the review of research policy and funding, uh, which I mentioned earlier. And the $3 billion uh, on re uh, research studentship, uh, the, details, the details of that scheme are being uh, prepared um, as we speak. Impact and benefit. Um, well, uh, as we talked about uh, impact, uh, societal impact as part of the, uh, the phase one report, um, ahead of the, the of, uh, I think ahead of the, uh, uh, the publication of that report, and certainly as a result of the, uh, the previous CE's policy address in earlier 2017, um, the UGC decided to launch a research impact fund to encourage, as you see there, more impactful research and, and, and uh, foster collaborative efforts um, with stakeholders uh, beyond academia. Uh, stakeholders are currently being consulted about that and uh, as part of this, uh, the second half of this session, uh, you'll be consulted um, exactly how that might work. Um, and the first call for proposals is expected to be, uh, to be sent out in early 2018. Now, um, research impact is, uh, will, has always been um, part of the assessment of RGC grant proposals, but we are reviewing and increasing uh, the importance of that criterion in the assessment of uh, funding schemes. For example, starting from 2018-19 exercise, applicants of the GRF ECS and FDS will be invited uh, to, pr to provide optional technology or knowledge transfer plans uh, in the project proposals, and they, these will be taken into account uh, in the assessment uh, process. Moving on to the portfolio balance. Um, as we said, the Research Impact Fund will be launched in early 2018. Uh, the RGC will review the Institutional Development Scheme for the self-financing sector, um, and uh, the result of that review will be known uh, early, uh, sometime in 2018. Strategic issues. Um, as the, the, uh, as the, 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 the task force had identified in, in, the, in the review of RGC, um, they, they recommended that uh, RGC and UGC should, take, uh, should identify global strategic priorities um, to guide its funding and to guide its re research strategy. Um, as part of that, the UGC, the committee itself, is preparing its strategic plan. Um, that's not a strategic plan for the sector. Um, it's a strategic plan for the business of the UGC and its own uh, priorities, which we think um, will be useful in clarifying uh, to the community what um, will be in the UGC's agenda uh, going forward, um, whether it's uh, about education or research. Um, the, the recommendation on the alignment among local funding bodies will be brought to the attention of, uh, of others, including the government. Uh, we're actively uh, working on that right now. Um, uh, in, fact, in fact, the chairman, I, I had a, a meeting with one of my colleagues with the Education Bureau uh, just earlier this afternoon uh, about that very, very issue, how we, uh, how we build uh, stronger linkages among the, uh, the funding bodies. Um, and it's also an issue that will be considered by the, uh, the new task force on uh, the review of uh, planning and funding of, uh, of, of research. Actions on an ongoing basis um, about the research portion. Um, because of the, the deep concern of uh, stakeholders about the um, the competitive allocation driving the art portion, the, the, the RGC grant success, um, which as many of you know, that its importance or its value in de determining the art portion was being phased upwards from 0% to 50% over a nine year period. Uh, and that phasing in uh, process was continuing. And uh, the UGC decided to freeze um, the, the, the further implementation at around the 26% level where it is at the moment, pending a review of whether that is, continues to be appropriate. So that is still um, in place. Um, quality of assessment and the phase two review. Um, uh, RGC is developing a new um, electronic system to manage the funding schemes online, which we hope will be fully uh, rolled out in 2019. Um, the principal investigators are no longer required to re nominate reviewers. Uh, this had been an, an issue with um, uh, various uh, problems, uh, caused various problems in the past, and so uh, we decided uh, simply to, um, uh, to, 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 to phase out the, uh, the requirement to nominate reviewers. And uh, as, we, as you see in the bottom bullet point, the RGC will conduct the phase two review to examine um, less 
macro issues in the coming months. Um, the RGC will continue uh, to conduct, uh, we're trying to do um, our best about streamlining processes uh, to maintain fairness and uh, enhance efficiency, but that has to be balanced with research grant proposal, uh, grant assessment rigor. Um, and uh, uh, the, the, the RGC will soon discuss the implementation timetable for the phase two review. So that's on the action plan uh, uh, going forward at the moment. Uh, there's still much to be done. Um, we're happy to uh, engage right now with um, your, your uh, uh, discussions, uh, your feedback about um, those proposals. Um, so that's the end of my uh, presentation. And um, I'll pass back to Sissy, who's the MC, and she'll tell me what I'm doing next. Thank you, Dr. Ma, for the presentation. Would Dr. Ma please stay on the stage and take a seat at the panel? The presentation slides will be uploaded on the UGC website within this week. May I also invite Mr. Carlson Tong and Chairman of the Research Grants Council, Professor Benjamin Wah, to the panel to join the question and answer section. Mr. Tong and Professor Wah, please. <laughs> 